So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Corey Lawson, who is joining us from the US. And Corey is the president and co-owner and visionary of the family-owned company All Volleyball Inc. Is that right, Corey? That is correct. Great. Hey, look, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, and um, we always like to get started with sharing a professional and a personal best. It's an EOS thing, as you know, and just, just to give the listeners a bit of an insight into who Corey is. Yeah, uh, happy, uh, happy to do it. And uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I would say personal best is um, we just talked a few minutes offline ago. Um, I am EOS has helped me so much and helped our business so much that uh, I've been able to uh, use the tools, uh, drink the Kool-Aid, as we like to say internally uh, at work here, that um, the business is really transformed. And so I am actually um, transitioning out of the everyday of the company. Um, I've made that decision official just uh, a couple of days ago, and I will be starting the journey to becoming a professional EOS implementer myself, uh, focusing on family businesses. So uh, that has been a long time in the works, but it uh, really just became official uh, in terms of paperwork signing, scheduling boot camp, making those arrangements. Um, so it's a big, big milestone for me um, mm -hmm. personally and professionally. High five. That's uh, fantastic. Can't wait to have you put part of the community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait to can't wait to be part of it. Uh, and then professional bus, uh, we operate on a um, you know a financial calendar year, uh, and we just closed our year, had the best year that we've ever had, both in revenue and profits. Uh, and so we were really thrilled to put a stamp on 2021, and we look forward to 2022. That's great, especially with everything that's going around the world. That's just fantastic news. Well done. Absolutely. Oh, so um, obviously we're here to talk about EOS today and your family business has been using it for a couple of years now. Would you give us a bit of a, a history of your family business and how it came about, how you got involved and then you know, bringing EOS into it? Sure, sure. Uh, so family owned business, I'm second generation owner. Uh, my dad started the company 26 years ago in 1995. Uh, he never graduated from high school. He was a union welder his entire life, and uh, he got uh, laid off. His job got shipped to Mexico, and um, he didn't have a job. And right around that time, my sister, uh, who's also a co-owner, she's a year older than I am, uh, she was playing, just starting to play volleyball, and he was driving around St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, where we're based at. Couldn't find anything volleyball related and just decided to start a volleyball store, uh, just a little retail store, um, 400 square feet in a small strip mall. Uh, no, no business degree, no high school education, and he just went for it. And that's what he did. And he got it out for several years and um, slow, steady progress along the way. Uh, and then you fast forward um, about 12 years ago, I joined the, the family company. And around that, around that time, we were a little bit under $2 million in revenue. Uh, my mom and my sister and just a small group of other staffers worked with us, almost all of them part-time. Uh, and then we just kept going, uh, right foot, left foot rinse and repeat, just trying to show up for our customer. Um, but uh, small, small growth, uh, you know, almost every year and just having a hard time getting out of our own way. Um, five years ago, we started the succession planning. So uh, my sister and I became official owners and uh, really the everyday operations was turned over to us. And one of my first priorities, you know, five years ago was figuring out how we we're going to last into the next generation, um, both mine and, and hopefully my kids someday. Mm -hmm. And um, I spent a couple of years just, you know, falling all over myself, trying to figure out what the next steps were, both in how to, um, you know, you know, deal with the changing market and a changing world and a changing industry, but also like, how are we going to use these tools? Uh, what tools can we use to actually put this into, into play? Uh, I tried uh, many different things, open book management, lean process improvements. I dabbled in Rockefeller habits, um, EOS, you know, many people call it traction was recommended to me by, um, some friends I'm in, um, EO, which is entrepreneurs organization. And that was recommended to me. I took a look at it. I decided very quickly that I was not capable, nor I was qualified to actually implement it. Um, so I walked away from it. Um, I gave it a year, came back to it and realized that if I was um, going to be able to, you know, take our company where we wanted to go, I needed a better operating system. And so uh, spent a fair amount of time talking to people internally, uh, making sure that we were ready for it. And when we decided we were ready for it, um, we went for it. And so we went all in. Uh, and that was about two years ago. And we have been um, implementing it uh, with, uh, you know, a certified implementer uh, for two years. And um, you know, it, it's really, it, it's really changed our business. So we started implementing it right before the pandemic happened um, and went through there and, and got us to here. So um, that's really the, 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 
the short business story, but we are we're a volleyball specific company. So we focus on um, selling all things volleyball related to um, athletes. They're you know generally their parents, their families are the ones that make the buying decision. So you know really a B two C market, and we have a B two B market, which are uh, teams, organizations, you know these big clubs that operate in the U.S. and worldwide that we service uh, all the athletes and their clubs. Uh, and, we, and we've really had a narrow focus um, since the beginning, and uh, that's uh, that's proven as well. Right. Hey, so I, I I know that you talked about trying lean open book management Rockefeller habits. They're all really really great systems. I mean, I know them all yeah. as well. Um, yeah. What what was it that appealed to you about EOS? Um, I think I saw myself in the business. You know, when I uh, EOS, you know, EOS has a lot of funny jargon you know, the semantics, the visionary and the integrator and quarterly conversations and rocks and just all kinds of, you know, fun colloquialisms. But, um, you know, when I started reading about a visionary, I really, like, I really saw myself there. Mm. Uh, but part of my hesitation initially was I don't have an integrator uh, right. and I am the integrator and I'm, and I'm also the bottle washer and cook and everything else. Yep. Um, but I saw myself in there. And when I saw myself in there, I gave myself a chance to explore what, what the other tools and systems were like. And what I realized was that um, it's a harder system, I believe, to implement than some of these others, but it is a turnkey system. And it addresses everything from the really high level stuff like core values and, and long-term targets all the way down to how do you run meetings? And that's really what I needed was... Uh, I, I didn't need just tools and tricks. I needed really a turnkey system that I could just open the playbook and say, if I follow this playbook, if I just do what it tells me to do and I execute it to the very best of my ability, then we're going to win. And once I found that and I gave myself permission to say, we have to build our company around this, um, that's when things started happening. They didn't happen overnight, but the progress really did start immediately. But really what it came down to is that, you know, I was scared off of from it at first, because it was so comprehensive, uh, because there was a tool for, you know, essentially everything uh, that scared me at first. But when I realized this was for us, this was the only way um, we just knew that we had to dive head first into it. And that's that's really what's been uh, the linchpin to, to the, the majority of our success. Oh, that's great. It is interesting you say that, actually, because a lot of people do say, oh, well, it's so um, tight in terms of what it provides and you have to follow all these different tools and rules and things. They feel that it might be restrictive. But can you just give me your experience on that? Sure, uh, it is. And it should be. And that's a good thing. Um, most, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with other business owners and and many are not generally they're not operators, nor are they integrators. They're They're usually visionaries that have to be integrators. And we, uh, I can say that because I'm one of them, we need that. We need structure uh, and we need focus and we need um, those tools. So it's generally, in my experience over the last couple of years, it's really not about ego. It's really just about, um, you know, ignorance and not, not in a bad way, just they, like we don't get it. You know, we don't see the, rest like we don't see the ability to focus and narrow and simplify uh, we don't see that as a as a business driver uh, until you get hit over the head enough or um, punched in the gut enough to really give it a shot. So, you know, certainly that is valid. Um, but I would say to many, um, that is a good thing. It's really just about buying into it and really understanding how it can apply to your business. Hey, look, the, um, I know that you're working with Sarah, who is a fantastic implementer and a good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, she was saying to me that in, the, in our introductory email that, you know, when you started the process, you went into focus day, which is the first day that we do, which is a little bit different to most consulting methods in that we don't cover the high um, level, big picture stuff. We actually go into, you know, what's holding us back, how do we create the right structure, the accountability chart and start putting things in place to actually do it. But that accountability yeah. chart exercise can be quite confronting. How, how did that go with your family so who came into focus day and what came out of that yeah um so focus day and that uh the the people journey has been really interesting um focus day in particular because uh it, when when we went it was uh myself mom dad my sister shannon and a few other people um two other people that were sorry three other people that were um just part of our company working in different roles um finance uh marketing 
uh, and customer service. And um, when we got done with that focus day, uh, my mom and dad were um, transitioned off of the leadership team along with another person. Really, really hard conversations around that mm -hmm. uh, and a process that didn't just, it, it wasn't absolute right there. It was a process of many weeks and months. It was really just the acknowledgement of something had to change. Mm -hmm. um, so at that focus day, it was, <laughs> excuse me, it was one of those watershed moments of, um, we don't have the right people or the right people are not here that need to execute and run the business. Um, owners can be uh, on the, you know, on the leadership team and many are, uh, but for us, we realized, uh, you know, my parents at the, at the time were in their sixties, they were ready to slow down transition. They didn't want to go to a 90 minute meeting every day, uh, sorry, every week. Um, and we were sensitive to that, but there was also just other holes that we needed to fill. Mm -hmm. So we, we started that transition um, right then and there. And over a, a period of about a year, uh, mom, dad, uh, and my sister all were transitioned off of the leadership team. And those were really, really hard conversations I had to have with them. Um, but those were, um, those were, you know, that just goes back to us just executing the plan. And we, we talk a lot internally about blaming it on EOS. You know, it's not personal. It's not me. I didn't do it. You know, we signed up for this. We signed up for EOS and it's telling us what we need to do. So in the course of that year, it was mom, dad, my sister, Shannon, uh, and we had two other people that we had to transition off the leadership team to, to make sure that we had the people component right. And what we learned is that we still didn't have it right. Um, and we had to kept, we had to keep working at it. But that was um, very interesting conversations around uh, how that um, how the process looks and what do you say? How do you how do you start the conversation? How do you end it? Did you cry? Did they cry? Were they mad at you? Um, yes. And all of it. Um, but we, we went through that because we, this was the part of the process that we knew if we were going to get this right, we we're really going to do this. We, we had to, we had to, you know, we had to be super vulnerable. We had to enter the danger and we had to call it like it is. And those are really hard conversations, but you know, now uh, everybody's happy that we did it. You know, it's just, it just took a little while. Fair enough. And I mean, sort of two years down the track now. So um, what do mum and dad and sister, are they still involved in the business? Are they, what are they sure. doing? Yeah. So uh, mom and dad are, are still involved in the business. They, um, you know, when the, when the pandemic started, um, we, you know, one of the first things we did was we, you know, we had to lay off eight people. Um, so that was a big part of our company because we're, you know, we're about 30 people, 30 plus people. That was a big part of our company. Yeah. Um, but by nature, they had to go back to work in the everyday. And so they, they were not working every day. They were not working in the everyday part of the business. They were getting to enjoy some of the benefits of really being, you know, a hands-off owner, uh, very focused on culture, very focused on just being a presence. Um, they like to say that they've got, you know, nine grandchildren, which is their immediate family, but 24 grandchildren, because we have lots of young families that work here. And so they were very focused on that. But when, when the pandemic started, they, they went back to work essentially full-time every day, nine to five. Um, and since then, what was, what was really neat was part of the U S process. They get to fall in love with the business all over again. And so they got to not be owners in the sense of executing the business plan, but they got to fill really essential roles in the business. And so that gave them the opportunity to kind of redefine what their work-life balance looked like. And so they worked very heavily in the business during the pandemic in 2021, as we transitioned out. They still worked um, almost every day, and they but they really found um, roles. My dad, so we um, we do a lot of production, um, you know, shipping orders, um, kitting orders for clubs and teams. Uh, my dad's a blue collar guy, you know. He you know again he never graduated from high school, no college education, uh, never learned how to type. Um, so he likes being back in the back with with the you know the crew that is you know working with their hands all day. Uh, and my mom supports our finance and business affairs team. So. These are important roles, but they're not ownership roles. They're not leadership roles, mm -hmm. but they've really fallen in love with that. And so they, you know, they don't work, um, they pull back on their schedule, but they do still have a very active role, but we have worked hard at meeting them where they are. Uh, and so we kind of check in with them every quarter uh, when we do, you know, our ownership, uh, same page meetings, yep. so mom and dad, how are you feeling? Like, do you, do you want to pull back more? Do you want to work more? Do you, and we, we really work hard at crafting those roles, but at the end of the day, they're high level contributors. But just not at an ownership or a leadership level. Um, my sister Shannon does. Uh, she did. She did transition out of the business. So um, we went from 
she was on the leadership team. Uh, she uh, left the leadership team, still an important role within the company, but over 2021, we realized that um, her gifting was outside of the company. And so um, December 31st of last year, um, so just, just a couple of weeks ago, was her last day at work. So she went to work somewhere else. She's still an owner. She's still very involved. We left all on great terms. Um, and so she, we still lean on her heavily because she's got 15 years of tribal knowledge you know, locked in her head that we haven't been able to quite get out yet. Yep. Um, all amicable, but it was all, I mean, these are all huge transitions and huge changes that we've done over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. It is interesting, isn't it? Because this happens both with family members, but also with staff members. And people are always nervous because, you know, the, this person's been in the business for a long, long time, but I, I can't speak on behalf of your sister, but often when they go and they find something else, they're a lot happier as well as the business being in a better space because of it. And like, it isn't a negative because somebody chooses to go somewhere else, is it? The hardest part is just making the decision mm. and having the conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Both uh, Shannon and our company are healthier as a result of it. And um, that was a big moment for us. And it was a, it was a tough moment for you know, my dad just wanted my sister to be happy. Didn't matter if it was at all volleyball uh, or working someplace else. Uh, my mom, she wouldn't see her daughter every day and she was kind of pissed off about it. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, my sister is healthier and happier. And so is the company and we left on the right terms. So she's still, we get to see her. She doesn't work on Fridays. So the last four Fridays now. Um, she's been in um, helping our young staff transition. And, um, you know, we backfilled her role internally. So we were able to elevate somebody that's been with us for a while into that position, which has been really cool to see. Yeah. Um, so she still comes in and, and helps out to make sure that their transition goes well. So, um, you know, knock on wood, it's only been about a month, but it, it's been a really great move for everybody. Excellent. That's great to hear. So in terms of the EOS journey, do you have any favorite tools that you, you've used in that journey? Yeah, I mean, I, I would always point to the L10 meetings as been one of the, one of our favorite tools. Um, I'm not so sure that I would call that a tactical tool because it's really one of the cornerstones of EOS, but that has been super helpful um, implementing them at the in, in all of the you know all of our departments. Um, that has been very very beneficial to us. Um, I would say the tool that we you know we pull out and we use the most is. Um, just continual gut checks on the accountability chart in our quarterly conversations. So these are tools, um, they were so hard for us to implement and, and to even feel like we were getting any type of traction or to get right. But we have learned that these two tools help us gain more clarity to that, like really just the everyday operating, operating of the business and how we need to, how we need to, organize and structure feedback for our staff. So, you know, we are, we are, we are trying to become experts at, you know, right people, right seat, GWC, you know, the, the whole model of the accountability chart, we are really working hard at that because we, to us, that's unlocking really the success of our business. And then how do we teach coach and really kind of upskill, we have a very young staff. Um, most of them have been with us for a really long time, but most of our staff is in their early thirties. Mm -hmm. And so as we give these, this next generation of leadership, the, the, the opportunity to lead a growing company, these quarterly conversations have been really, really good because it's intentional feedback. And it's the same way delivered every time with the same scorecard. So everybody knows the, the playing field that they're on. And it's just been such a big deal for us um, for, for, all of the reasons and more that I've, I've just described. Okay. And so um, what would you say has been the biggest change in the organization since starting on that EOS journey? Biggest change in the organization is that there really hasn't been a lot of change. Um, once we figured out what our, um, you know, our long-term target was, uh, we went through our core values exercise and really we worked on those foundational tools um, there has been you know pivots and tweaks along the way but we have maintained a pretty laser focus and that is very different than especially the couple years preceding that you know when I took over you know we went from you know 1995 to 2000 you know 15 or 2016 largely doing the same thing 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that is why we had slow and steady growth, but that's also why there was real risk to the business is because we just didn't, we weren't changing fast enough. And when I, when I, um, took more of a leadership position within our company, I mean, I was, I was changing everything. Go, I like, literally, I was one of those guys that would go to the conference, realize we're not doing this and we have to do that. Uh, and, and, you know, this created a very whiplash effect and, and really what it did was it eroded the trust that people had in the direction of the company. And so that was, you know, we laugh about it now. Um, we have a lot of fun with it now, but there was a period of time where that was, it was a really, really tough place to work because roles weren't defined. Um, the direction we, you know, we're pointing this way mm -hmm. and no one really knew who was in charge because that was the time when Shannon and I were co-leading the company. And so the biggest change was that we, we went through this process and we said, you know, unless the house is on fire, you know, even at the risk of a global pandemic, we're not changing because we're going to put in the work to make sure that whatever decisions we make, they're the right ones. And we are really going to stick to them. And so the, the biggest change is that we've, we've moved in one simple direction for the last couple of years, and we've just reaped the benefits of it. Yep. And that's got you through a pandemic as well. So you're not saying that you don't yes. have to adjust to the environment, but you no. have a sharp focus on what you're doing. Interesting. You talked about, you know, setting up that long-term target, which we do in the VTO and the core values and things. Um, did you have that before EOS? No, <laughs> like Excuse me. Or did you have it written down even, I should ask as well? No, we, well, we had like 12 different versions of it. And that, again, like that was a problem is that we, um, our core values really weren't core values and we did not have any long-term targets. I mean, in fact, you know, I remember um, vividly uh, realizing when I started thinking about the EOS process and what a long-term target meant that I had been working for the company for, you know, five, six years and I didn't even know what my parents wanted to, dad, do you want it to be a hundred million dollar company or do you want it to be five? Like I never asked him that question. And so that all of those were really groundbreaking for us. Now, it wasn't that we didn't try, like I tried different versions of it, but again, like that's why I, I fell back to, you know, revisiting EOS was because it, it it's a very clear outline of the things that you have to accomplish. And so the answer is yes and no. If you were to ask me the question in a different way, like, hey, did you actually use any of these things to direct your business? I would say absolutely not. I, all I did was just confuse the shit out of people uh, and, and really just cause a lot of just could cause a lot of anxiety around there because people really didn't know, you know, one day to the next, probably not, but certainly weekly, monthly. Yep. Um, people felt like change was always coming and um you know, that was that was a hard transition for us to make. But now, yeah, mm, I love your honesty. Thank you so much. Um, just for those people who are listening, who perhaps see the visionary traits in themselves. Um, you know, it is true that the visionaries often come with lots of different ideas. They're sort of all over the place in terms of where they're going. That's really important to take the business forward. But yeah. how did you feel having sort of structure put around that? Did you feel constrained? Like what what? What was going through your mind as a visionary? Because I do have people who I talk to and they go, oh yeah, but I don't want to be constrained. Yeah, mm. um, it's hard. It was, it was, it was hard um, realizing that I was in that role and I wasn't, I was not the person that should be in that role. So it was hard. It was, it was really just hard swallowing the idea of I'm not a, the right person in the right seat to be able to execute the the business model and the the and figuring out what that is like early in our journey mm -hmm. uh it was hard realizing that that person didn't exist at our company and that mm -hmm. we really needed to find that person if we wanted to um make this work and so yes it was hard from the moment that i started it um it is still hard we have an excellent integrator now um who does keep me focused keeps our company focused um, but we we fight like brothers and sisters um, because uh, to this day I, I still get excited about new ideas and and so we are we are very much that classic pair, um, you know, a duo so to speak. But yes, like to this day, it it does get it, it is hard. Here's the thing though, is that once you start seeing some of the decisions that you make 
and focusing and letting your integrator, or if you can be that integrator, because there are people that can do, do both of those roles. When you stick to it and you see the results, staying focused becomes a lot easier. Um, once you see the results, whatever your results are, generally it's revenue and profit, but it could be, you know, freedom of schedule. It could be, you know, passing the business off to whatever, whatever your objectives are. Once you start seeing the results, it becomes a lot easier, but for a while there, it's really hard. Uh, and true visionaries, I don't think it ever, I don't ever think it goes away. But what it has done, if I'm if I'm hearing you right, though, is it's actually given you now the freedom to go off and do other things outside of just being the visionary within the organization. Hey, where did you find your integrator out of interest and how? Uh, I found my integrator. Uh, so we uh, had a local recruiter in St. Louis yep. that was helping us fill positions, um, marketing sales positions that we needed to. And she, um, she we spent a lot of time together and she said, I have a, I have a friend that I think you should meet. I said, great. Like, tell me about her. And, and so the long story of it is, was, uh, she, you know, she was more accomplished than most people that we were looking for. We weren't even looking to hire her, but this, this recruiter that knew me well and knew her well said, I think you guys would make a good pair. And she was familiar with the EOS model. And so we met just informally and we, um, we spent the better part of a year, um, about once a month, we would get together and talk and, you know, she'll, she will tell you that, you know, one of the first conversations I, I had with her was, I don't have a role for you and nor can I afford you. Um, so I'm not really sure why we're talking, but Kelly told us that we should talk. So here we are, let's have some coffee. And, and that was, um, a, a long, you know, it was a long process to realize that she, wow. She was, and I wasn't looking for an integrator, so to speak. I was actually looking for an adult because I, I, we, again, like that, this was back when most of our staff was in their late twenties yep. that could help me manage the business, uh, help my sister and I manage the business. And what I realized was this person is classically an integrator. And so before we got serious about EOS, we took the, the rocket fuel assessment uh, and we realized that we both tested, you know, that the equilibrium of ourselves were really skewed towards an integrator and a visionary. So it was a bit of happenstance. Yeah. We have used um, uh, other, you know, companies, recruiting firms that specialize in uh, finding integrators or finding, you know, finding people that, that fit in the EOS model, which all highly recommended. But for us, we were very lucky that um, she kind of was introduced to us and entered into our life right when we were starting that journey. Mm, perfect. Hey, so just for the, the listeners who don't know, so the rocket fuel test is a, a, a very quick online test that actually helps you to understand whether you are more likely to be on the visionary side or the integrator side. And as we know, if you can find a visionary and an integrator who work together well, that's the perfect combination for taking a business forward, right? It really is. And um, I, I railed against that for a long time because integrators generally um I'm lucky enough to be very good friends and I enjoy working with our integrator, but that doesn't, that's not always case. We certainly are not anything like each other, yeah. um, but they're expensive and they're hard to find. Uh, and so the, they're making that commitment is really tough. Um, but I'm just, you know, one of the reasons I feel it's important that I enter into the EOS community as a coach is because I'm still living and breathing this stuff every day. And I really can speak to the value of, spending more money than you feel like you have, um, maybe even creating a position that you don't even know exists. Um, but people, especially visionaries that want to make this work, not having somebody that can execute the business plan down to you know, your daily cadence of an L10, um, it's really the missing link to a lot of the stuff. Fantastic. Hey, look, we're running short of time. It always seems to go so quickly when I'm having these conversations. So um, I'd like to thank you for sort of sharing all of that. Just in terms of tips and tools for the listeners, we'd like to give them three things they can take away. Could be something that you've done yourself or something in the business. What would you like yeah. to offer? Uh, a couple of things that I would say. Uh, first and foremost would be um, either find a system that you can use to operate your business or create one of your own. And um, don't deviate, spend the time and the energy to find the right one, even if it's not an EOS or anything that's already been published. You know, if you read the book, it's really not rocket science. Um, it's really about, so if you're, 
If you can build your own system out of cobbling together the best of everything, the, the key is finding something and sticking to it. And for us, it was EOS. Many others, it is different different business operating systems. Mm -hmm. And some of the most successful people I know that are in my EO forum or just in, you know, just other counterparts, they don't run on any operating system. They just have built their own, but they're disciplined enough to use it. So my, my first, my, my, my plea for any business owner that wants to, wants to find some peace and some profit and some purpose in their business is find that system, whatever that looks like, like commit to finding that system. Uh, the second thing that I would say, like that we talk all the time about is we, we say, stop playing store. So when I say this, I mean, stop going through the motions, like stop saying you're going to do something and then do the exact opposite, like lean into the hard stuff. You know, everybody knows what we, what you need to do. We're just all scared, all of us all the time. Uh, and so the, that is really kind of taken on a life of its own. And we say, just stop playing store, like lean into the tough stuff uh, and, and do what we know is right for the business. Uh, and the last one is just get help. You know, for us, you know, I joined um, EO, which is, you know, other business owners and I'm part of a forum that I really enjoy and I appreciate. Um, and then we hired an implementer and again, like they're super expensive, uh, but uh, it, getting help, whatever that looks like, so if that's a coach, if that's a professional organization, um, many times like we're on an island and um, our coworkers, even our families, they just, they don't get it. And so finding um, that support, whether that's personal, professional, a combination of both, um, has just paid, paid really big dividends uh, for, for, for me, our business and my family personally. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, that's great. So um you're going to become an implementer very soon. If people want to talk yeah. to you about your journey and want to come on board with you, how would they get hold of you? Where would they find you, Corey? Um, well, I'm going to be honest. I, my, my social, my social game is pretty weak right now, but I am on LinkedIn. You can just, you know, search Corey Lawson. Uh, but really the best way to reach me right now is just at my, uh, my email address. And that's just Corey, C-O-R-E-Y at allvolleyball.com. Uh, those all come to me. So uh, I hope that you're going to ask me that question in about six or eight months and yeah. I will have a website and I will have all kinds of other ways. Um, but right now that's just part of my transition. It's also just being really self-aware of where I'm at is, you know, this, this business and brand building process. So best way you either just go to our website, allvolleyball.com, fill out a form, it'll get to me, yep. um, or you can email me and I'll get back to you within one business day. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Hey, well, look, again, congratulations on the best year ever last year. Um, congratulations yeah. on becoming an EOS implementer. I look forward to catching up with you in the community as soon as we're allowed to travel again. <laughs> Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And thanks for doing what you do for the community. It's awesome. Oh, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. All right. Bye.